So this is how I made my webtoon. Three bros, one brain cell. To preface, this isn't the first webtoon I've made. Well, the first one was probably last year, back in May, where I learned a lot about drawing webtoons on my iPad. How to plan, draw, and typeset the webtoon. This video will focus primarily on the visual aspects of the webtoon, mostly drawing. And before I go into the process, I'll firstly talk about the supplies I use. So for hardware, I have a normal iPad. It's the seventh generation. I use a first generation Apple Pencil. And for the software I use, I use Procreate. For typesetting, which I'm not gonna go that much into in this video, but maybe some other one, I use Midibang, and that's also on the iPad. Some useful programs I'd like to mention are 3D modeling programs that I use, mostly for references. I like the Magic Poser app from the Apple App Store. It provides really useful references, and when I'm just too lazy to come up with a unique pose, I can browse their app. Anyway, so for my drawing process, like I mentioned before, I use the app Procreate. And in Procreate, there's a limit on how big and long your canvas size is. So before starting my webtoon, I did some research about how other people made theirs. And I learned it's pretty common to make the canvas size larger than the required size. And then by shrinking it down, you can fit webtoon's requirements. The largest canvas I made in Procreate was 1600 by 13,000. I duplicated this canvas because I wanted to make a longer episode. For drawing, drawing process is pretty structured for me. I first like to do a really, really rough sketch where I just plan where everything is going to be. It's usually pretty ugly at this stage, but it gets the job done. After that, I do a more refined sketch. This is in preparation for the line art I'm going to do. In the past, I never really took the steps seriously, but by I learned by refining your sketches in this stage, it'll save a lot of time doing the line art because you don't have to go back and fix or try and interpret <laughs> what your messy sketch lines are. So that's a tip for me. For the line art, uh, my style, I like to incorporate black wherever I can in my character's design. So for example, Ben's hair is mostly made of black without that much shading, and so is Mark's and shirt. This is a stylistic choice, but it is also a strategic choice, if you will. This is to save time and energy from coloring the clothes and hair, which I had to do for the two other characters. I also like the aesthetics of, you know, just pen and ink. Speaking of aesthetics, <laughs> I chose to do black panels instead of white ones. This is from my own preferences, but it's also... Yeah, <laughs> the, the obsession with like dark themes. I wanted to not strain my eyes while making this webtoon as well as to be courteous to everyone else's eyes, but <laughs> that's just me <laughs> fucking around trying to justify my choices, whatever. Um, since my webtoon is uh, a comedically focused webtoon, I like to include a lot of gag faces where it's just like simple one or two lines and these capture expressions really well I feel. These are really fun to draw and they also strategically save time and is like helps me not draw as much as I need to whilst still being impactful with the expressions. So after the line art and you know coloring the outside panels the next stage would be the base colors so this stage 
is infamously monotonous where you just go and go and let your brain basically go on autopilot but I don't know this stage can be pretty relaxing so you basically it's pretty self-explanatory take the select tool and then fill in the space with a paint bucket <laughs> you there's a color palette section on you know the color wheel when I was making my first webtoon, I didn't utilize this feature, so every time I had to scroll back and color drop whatever was in the background for my first webtoon, and it was so, so painstakingly slow. But there's the color palette option, so this step would be considerably easier if you use that. So after the base colors, I have to render my character. Before, before even coloring, I debated whether I should render my characters or not. And at first I was like, uh, rendering is a lot of work, I'm sure it'll just be fine. Plus, I'm lazy, like the next person is. But I decided that rendering makes the look way, way more interesting, even if it's simple, right? So for my rendering style, it's pretty simple since I like to be efficient <laughs> so my rendering style it's mostly just outlining the, the line art with a darker shade of what the original base color was so I go on a multiply layer I set it to 50% I choose a red color because that's just what I like and I go around the line art um, occasionally I would do bigger shapes for areas like the nose or like around the eyes and clothes. For the hair and clothes, I mostly use gradients. Gradients are amazing because you can feign the look of you actually putting a lot of work without, without being a lot of work. <laughs> And this just brings out more interest and makes the items you're coloring more interesting. And for my background, if you've read my comic, you'd know that most of the backgrounds are just plain flat colors. I do have an exposition shot where it's a shot of the apartment and the background is kind of rendered, but it's mostly in that black and white ink feel color. I wanted to use the background colors to associate colors with my characters. So for example, when Ben speaks, his background color is pink most of the time. And for when Markson speaks, his is gray. This is just to associate the color palette with the characters and make them stand out more. I wanted to have a cohesive color palette and blended colors from character to character. So Markson's background color is Ben's sweater color. At the end of the episode, I put a more illustrated drawing of Mark and Ben. This was to basically signify that this was their episode. This was their introduction to their friendship. And I'm going to do that for every one of my episodes where I introduce their dynamic. <laughs> After that, of course, the coloring is not going to be perfect, and I like to make a new layer, a normal color layer, and just clean up any coloring I messed up, <laughs> which I never do because I'm perfect, but um, it's just needed. After that, I would export all the files as a ping to my camera roll, and since like I mentioned before at the beginning, the canvases are larger than the webtoon's required size. I have to shrink them down. So on Procreate, I make a new canvas, which is to the appropriate width, which is 800. So I make the canvas 800 by 16,000 because that's the biggest length uh, the Procreate lets me do. So after that, I import each of the photos so, for reference, uh, an 800 by 16,000 canvas can fit two 1600 by 
13,000 <laughs> canvases because that's just how math works. And I adjust the length. I fix whatever formatting issues I want to fix. And I start at this stage since all the drawing and coloring is done. I move on to the speech bubble placement and the typesetting, which I will discuss in another video since <laughs> this video is too long already and I want my videos to be concise and not too long. So yeah. Another thing I would like to mention is that uh, you have to make a thumbnail for your series. And that thumbnail, if I remember, is like 450 by 450 pixels. So don't forget that. <laughs> I basically did the same thing as I would for making my webtoon. And since the canvas, since I didn't have to use such a big canvas for that, I actually have a time lapse video of my actual process. So here it is. Oh, and don't forget the thumbnail for the actual episode. For that, I just took a random screenshot from my actual episode and just shrunk it down. So. Yeah, that's the coloring and the drawing process. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, bye. <laughs>